Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm outside to test out my latest device that I created using a GPS module so I'm able to record natural trails out in the wild. So I'm currently out on a hill nearby and I'm testing the device but because it's minus five currently let's go inside and I'll show you how I build it and how it works. Here inside it's much better and much warmer than outside so we can start and go over how the whole device works and we're gonna start by first looking at the prototype where I explain how the individual components work. And before going any further let me thank today's sponsor which is PCBWay specializing in prototyping and small volume production. PCBWay's PCB assembly services make developing your project easy and hassle free. Whether it's SMT, BGA or through hole assembly they handle it all. With state-of-the-art equipment like Fuji pack and place machines and 3D X-ray, quality and precision are what PCB Way delivers. And hey, they like to keep things flexible. Choose from the lidded or lead free options, plus no minimums, start as low as 5 pieces because they believe in giving you exactly what you need. Their expert team works around the clock ensuring you get the best quality and quickest lead times. PCB Way is not just a provider, they are your PCB and custom manufacturing partner ensuring your project exceed expectations. Visit PCBWay.com from the link below and get a welcoming bonus to try them out. And here is the device prototype, uh, I'm running an ESP32 uh, on which on the additional hardware serial I have connected the GPS module through connecting TX and RX. It's being powered from 3.3 volts. Additionally, I have the data logging uh, shield with a micro SD card, and this one is using the SPI interface. So I have it connected to the SPI interface on the ESP32. And additionally, I have an LED to indicate the recording status of the device and also a push button so I can trigger the recording. Uh, when I press it, the LED turns on and that indicates that this is now recording and will record the GPS track that we um, we going to map. And if I press it again, then we tell it that, okay, we will now stop the recording and that would uh, finalize the file. And on the subsequent recording, it will start recording in another file. Now, this whole thing works. I need to do some tweaks on the code before I can uh, we can test it outside. But before we go outside, this would be messy. So let's build it on a perv board so that we make it a bit more permanent than this. And the star of the project is this GPS module that Rayx was kind enough to send me for free for me to test. It's the RYS 3532A. And it's a multi-constellation GNSS module that supports the GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and Beidou. It comes in a small form factor with a built-in antenna. And it also has a built-in battery to uh, support the function and the real-time clock tracking of the module. There are multiple ways how we can connect. We can either use this Molex connector on the back or we can use the pins here to solder some headers and have it permanently soldered in the device that we're gonna make. It also has two LEDs, one that indicates the communication uh, with the microcontroller and the other one for the PPS function uh, when it acquires a position. So this is the finalized device. I have the GPS now mounted through the pins and also the SD card and the ESP32 is powered from the USB and we'll use a power bank to test it outside. The switch that I had on the breadboard I replaced with the push button here so when I press it the indication is on that the recording is started and that we are now recording a trail. Currently we are not having a location because I'm inside and although the GPS can handle being inside for most of the part it takes a while to till it get a location. So for the final test let's finalize all the code and go outside to try and map some of the trails around here and just before going outside i decided to add one more led and this one is used to know uh, to indicate to me that the gps has a valid location so that it found satellites and it now currently handling the location and that would trigger the led to uh, to lit and to stay on uh, while it has a gps signal and a proper location so we know that we 
when we start the recording process, we know that we have a valid location that we're going to record. Otherwise, the recording will just sit and wait until we get a valid location. And that might be a bit tricky because we might think that we are recording. Well, in fact, we don't have a really a valid location. And now that we are back from the field test, it's time to take out the micro SD card and I'm going to use this adapter to uh, make it larger so if it fits in my laptop, I'm going to plug it in to the laptop and let's try and see what we actually recorded. And here on screen, I have Google Earth opened in the browser and I'm going to use it to display the KML files just because it's convenient and readily available. And this is the city where I live in and I've tested the device here in this area here on this hillside. So let's try and we're going to import the KML file that's on the SD card. And this is the SD card and you'll see there are four files three of which I recorded now on the filters that I was on. So let's open the first one and we'll see that once it's being loaded, we're going to be zoomed into it. And this is where I started recording. This is clo close by to where I live. So I started from this road up through this trail. And if we switch to the 3D model, you'll see that it goes uphill and I'll try to include some of the clips uh, of me walking up uh, through through the area and you'll see that we are basically following the trail as it goes um, deviating somewhere because some parts of it were covered with a lot of ice so we had to go out and deviate a bit and this is now reaching the top of the hill uh, there are few antennas here and there is a nice view of the city from from up above that i'll include the original recording of uh, and that's the first trail uh, we can also import the other two uh, so for the second one i continued from here all the way to the antenna viewpoint that we have here and you'll see that pad will be added so this is where i stopped the first recording we hang out a bit here with my daughter and then from here i we continued on this pad here all the way up to um to the antennas and you'll see here this is the top of the hill and the the antennas uh, that are used for telecommunications or something and then we hang up a bit here next to this uh, church, this monastery, and from there we continued recording on our way down, and that's the third file that I'm going to import now. So on each recording session, the file name is increased, and you can detect, you know, that it's a different trail. And this is the final recording that we did. So we started from here, down through this road, and we end up in the um, yard of this other church that we have nearby. And if we try to see how the whole trail looks in 3D, we basically recorded a full circle. So from here, we went up on this first hill, then on the highest point and down to that uh, church over here. So you can see that the device actually worked and it recorded three different trails. And now depending on what you want to do with them, you can um, use that data and maybe create an application that um, 
can keep you near a mountain trail and tell you how far you are from from that recorded trail and there is a lot of purposes or if we want to display unknown trails for example nearby we have a national park uh, that's over here that has a lot of trails and if we want to show maybe what are the available trails that you can get and then it's really beneficial to have all of the um, recordings and all of the trails mapped on the mountain here on the card we had uh, we have the three file and if we want to go and look at uh, any of them we'll see that we have some boilerplate that's being created at the beginning that indicates the path and also how it's displayed relative to the to the ground and then inside the coordinates tag we have the coordinates that are being recorded on the um, GPS itself so that continues for as long as we record the pad and at the end we just close the file with the relative um, closing text of the KML specification so we know that uh, it's a valid file and we can directly use uh, to, to display it in Google Earth and you know also other instances where uh, KML files are uh, accepted. Now the code that runs on the device well, I'll have available in the video description. It will be linked to the relative uh, website article on my website where you can find the full code that I'm using on the device. And I'll quickly go through it to explain uh, what it has and what, how it uh, operates, but it's heavily based on the Helium GPS tracker that I've um, created a while ago. And you'll find the, the link to that video in the upper right corner of the video. Uh, so I won't go into too much details, but um, basically I'm handling the position exactly the same as in that project with the tiny GPS plus library, but I here have few other things like starting the uh, SD communication with the uh, micro SD card and also the GPS serial that I communicate with the GPS module. So I have few functions here and depending on the um, state of the button, then I'm either starting or finishing the recording and I have two methods that one is to finalize the file if I'm stopping the recording, if, if I'm already recording and stopping. And the other one is to get the next file name. So we know to count how many files we have on the SD card and increment by one. So uh, we create a new file and then start that file with the proper KML uh, settings. And then we said that we are doing recording. We have the statuses of the LED and a little bit of code so I can send com commands to the GPS module directly through serial if needed. That's mostly for debugging purposes. And this is the code that handles the location. Um, within the start file, I have the raw string that I'm sending to the documents whenever I create them and I'm using another function which I called write to file that allows me to write all of this text to at the beginning of the file then when I'm uh, actually recording a position I'm using that write to file um, method to tell it to which recording file I'm saving and also the data that I'm saving. And this is the longitude, latitude, and the altitude in meters that I'm sending uh, as we saw in the KML file. So basically this is uh, this string. Then um, the handling of the location uses the uh, GPS tiny library. And uh, we are setting here uh, this flag. So it indicates that green LED that you saw earlier indicates if we are in a valid position or not. And with the finalized file, I'm still uh, using this basically the same a hard coded string to append at the end of the file that I'm currently recording. And basically that's uh, all that there is to the device. It's quite straightforward and easy to understand once you go in and look at the details of the code. Feel free to let me know down in the comments if you have any questions regarding the code or if you uh, have any other questions regarding the modules or the project itself. And that brings us to the end of the today's video. 
uh, where I'll definitely had fun exploring uh, and playing with GPS and data logging. I must agree that uh, using the Rayx module was one of the simplest that I've used so far and it seems to have good accuracy and uh, the onboard antenna makes it perfect for the operation. It's definitely one of the easiest ones to mount in DIY projects and together with the logging shield i think we made a nice prototype and we had an interesting time at the workbench if you like this video be sure to like it down below make sure to subscribe to see my other projects and my future videos and i will see you all in the next one cheers